sawa. Na sawa. Ulisema ni watu wa mtego ama mulisema ni watu wa jubilee? In the run up to the 2017 general election, Kenya experienced a severe maize shortage that prompted the government to act. The government has refuted claims of maize shortage in the country even as it moved to assure Kenyans that more imports will be made until the situation stabilizes. A gazette notice by then Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Willie Bett opened a duty-free importation window which would become one of Kenya's worst maize scandals. In this documentary, we revisit the 2017 maize crisis and document its impact on the Kenyan farmer. We also seek to explain why maize always gains prominence in an election year and why that matters to you. Asubui! Siyasa! Hata ni kimweta kimondo! Sasa raida meacha kuwa kimu. Saa sita! Siyasa! Nobody can stop! Wakajua! Wakanisa utafuruwa! Jioni! Tumide kiyemu yote! Na! Almost trying to show, you know, we can do without these people. We are not unique. We are not unique. We are not unique. We are not unique. Women should not compete for our spaces. So when you are unbogable, you are not scared. Long before the 2017 general election, Paul Marus, a prominent farmer in Wasingishu County, was farming over a thousand acres of maize. Mimi napenda hii kazi kwa sababu hii kazi imeweza kunisomesea watoto na hiyo kazi imeweza kunichunga kama cha mimi tangu utotoni mwangu sichafanya kazi nyingine. Paul was among the 10,636 farmers and traders who supplied maize to the National Cereals and Produce Board NCPB during the 2017-2018 crop season. Nilipereka mahindi ya 50 kilos, nilipereka mahindi kitu kama kuinia elibu sitina bili. But as Paul prepared to deliver his maize, numerous companies and unscrupulous traders took advantage of the duty-free importation window and flooded the local market with maize. The outcome was devastating to Paul and other farmers. Importation ya hiyo mahindi ndio ilitumisa kwa sababu ukicharibu kusikia sile pesa ililipu wa sana, ililipu wa mwesu wa kumi. Na sisi huwa tunapereka mahindi kuanzia mwezi wa 12 na Januari. Sasa sile pesa ambaye walilipwa ile cartels ambaye waliweza kuimbod mahindi ni kuanzia mwezi wa 10. By the end of April 2018, NCPB had received maize worth of 11.3 billion Kenya shillings. Yet, the total budget available was 9.9 billion Kenya shillings, which included two supplementary budgets. NCPB is said to have prioritized payment to traders and brokers at the expense of Paul and other farmers. As at 25th October 2018, 9.41 billion Kenya shillings had been paid out, leaving a balance of 2.81 billion shillings. This balance, which is yet to be paid, includes 1.4 billion Kenya shillings for 152 claims under investigation, 429 million Kenya shillings for 74 farmers whose deliveries do not match their authorized quantities by the vetting committee, and 271 million Kenya shillings for 44 farmers who collected their verification forms but never returned them to their respective depots. Paul is among those whose claims are under investigation. Kwa mimi sahi, mimi natai NCPP 69 million. Hiyo 69 million ni pesa ya wenyewe. Uh, AFC wana try mimi 45 uh, KCP na nitai 15 million Paul is hopeful he will eventually get paid but it's not clear when the matter has been dragging on for four years now meanwhile the interest on his loans keeps growing ile kitu imekocha kuniumisa sasa ambaye naumia saa hii ni interest ile interest saa hii kwa mwaka mimi nataiwa 8 million 400 kwa hiyo pesa ambayo nilikuwa nimeomba kwa hivyo hata ile mahindi nimelima nimesaitiwa tu na e, na AFC ili nilime lakini pure singa kwa nalima mahindi According to the Senate committee which investigated the 2017 maize scandal 
Three companies were responsible for over half of the maize imported into Kenya from outside the East Africa community and Comesa region. The companies were Hydri P Limited, Stantweb Limited, The Commodity House Limited, and The Holbad UK Limited. Now Shadali Agberali Merali is the managing director and 6.95% shareholder in Hydri P Limited. He is also a 50% shareholder in The Commodity House. Hydri P Limited was blacklisted and banned from importing sugar following recommendations by the Parliamentary Agriculture Committee in 2013. The Agricultural Food Authority did not enforce the license revocation. In the 2015-2016 Auditor General's report, Naushadali Emirali was named among owners of companies, including Hydri P Limited, which illegally developed warehouses on land valued at 8 million Kenya shillings, belonging to the Kenya Ports Authority. Roshanali Agberali MDUG owns 6.9% shares in Hydri P Limited and is thought to be the same person as Roshani Emerali Doji, one of the original directors of Holbard Limited UK from its inception in 1977. He resigned in 1987. Gulamali Masumali Merali is a director of three companies of interest in Kenya. Hydri P Limited, The Commodity House, and Stantweb Limited, in which he is also a 50% shareholder, together with Sajad Alias Gahilji. He is also a director of Holbard Limited, and Holbert Group Limited in the UK. Besides the three companies owned by the Meralis, other major importers of maize in 2017 included Export Trading Company Limited and Mombasa Miss Millers. During the 2009 maize crisis, Mombasa Miss Millers and its associated companies received nearly 1 million bags of maize from NCPB. This made Mombasa Miss Millers one of NCPB's biggest customers at a time when its managing director, Mohamed Islam Ali, was appointed to the NCPB by then Agriculture Minister and current Deputy President William Ruto. Ruto refused to resign over the maize scandal. He survived a censor motion in Parliament, moved by former Ikolomani MP, Boni Halwale. Honorable members, the results of the division are eyes 22, nose 119, abstentions 4, Total 145. The nose have it. And, 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 and consequently, the motion is lost. Ruto was suspended by then Prime Minister Relo Dinga, who was in a grand coalition government with the late former president, Mwai Kibaki. I am hereby suspending with immediate effect the following ministers for a period of three months. One, Honorable William Ruto, Minister for Agriculture. But Ruto quickly dismissed the suspension. I have not received any communication from the appointing authority as Minister for Agriculture, and therefore I will continue to discharge the responsibilities of the Minister for Agriculture until, 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 until that authority tells me I should do otherwise. Raila himself was linked to the May scandal by the Departmental Committee on Agriculture, which investigated the matter. The members of parliament, however, deleted the clauses that implicated Raila and rejected the committee's report on grounds that it was politically engineered and absolutely clumsy. When asked during the 2017 presidential debate about his alleged involvement in the 2009 May scandal, Raila said he took the necessary action including suspending two of his officers. But you need to know that I also suspended the minister in charge of agriculture, who had been giving his friend letters to go and take mails from the National Citizens Board, the current deputy president. Uh, and, but it, it, that decision was countermanded by the president. Both Raila and Ruto are top contenders for Kenya's presidency in the August 9 general election. Raila has the backing of outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta and his cabinet, including Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya. We asked Munya about the alleged involvement of Raila and Ruto in the 2009 May scandal. Raila Odinga. Raila. 
Anasema so hawezi kuwa na ahusika na Eddie anasema huyo avafutwa. So yeye ndiye alikuwa amemweka huko. But even with the past maze scandals, Jonathan Meli, a large scale farmer in Cherangani, Transoia County, says the formative years were better for maize farmers. Miaka za hapo nyuma kama wakati ya serikali ya Kibaki eh, ukulima ilikuwa ni mzuri sana gharama ya ushalishaji ilikuwa chini kwa sababu serikali walikuwa wameweka manane sana kwa pande ya subsidy ya fertilizer na, na mafuta diesel tulikuwa na mahindi ya kutosha kama mimi nilikuwa nasalisha mahindi kama kunia 1400 kwa mwaka na hiyo mahindi yote ilikuwa ni kuuza national cereals and produce code inalipwa pesa yote hiyo pesa ingine narudisha banka eh, narudisha FC ama bank mali nimekopa pesa ya kufanyia ukulima na ile pesa ingine mimi nafanyia investment until recently before the Kenyatta government rolled out the subsidy program a 50 kg bag of fertilizer was retailing at nearly 6000 Kenya shillings this was out of reach to many farmers like Jonathan who was hard to make adjustments in his farming kama mimi nimekuwa nikilima mahindi ekari 100 lakini kulingana na ile hasara nilipata kwa mahindi kuoza na bei duni sasa nimeona mwaka hii kwa sababu gharama ya kulima iko juu nimepunguza shamba kutoka ekari 100 na lima tu eka 10 peke yake hiyo e, ingine nimeshindwa kwa sababu sichapata ngufu ya kuweza kulima hiyo Jonathan feels abandoned by a government which has outlined food security as one of its big four agenda soko ye mwenyewe unajitafutia na kwa ile soko unajitafutia wewe mwenyewe una una control kwa mali yako. Mahindi mwenye ananunua ndio anakuletea bei yake lakini wewe mwenye unauza una una uwezo wa kuamua bei yako. Sasa utafuata tu bei ya mununusi kwa sababu yeye ndio yako na pesa wewe uko na mali. Uko na mahindi na unataka kuuza uta, uta, utakubali kuhusia kwa bei ya hasara. Last year Jonathan says he sold his maize at a throwaway price due to factors beyond his control. Tuliuza mahindi kwa bei ya shilingi 1800 mpaka shilingi 2300. Lakini ilipofika mwezi wa pili na mwezi wa tatu mpaka saa hizi tumeona bei ya mahindi imekuja kwa shilingi 1300 kwa gunia ya 90 kilos. Lakini kulingana na gharama ya pembecheo na mambo ya ma- mafuta na gharama ya leba kwa shamba tunaona bei ya shilingi 1300 bado iko chini msumu ya kupanda inaanza wakati wote kuanzia saa hii but how much does it cost to produce maize in an acre of land kufikia saa hizi gharama ya kulima na mpaka kupanda kwa mwaka chana wakati mbolea ilikuwa chini ilikuwa ni kati ya 1040 na 1045 kwa eka na kwa masao utapata kama umefuna sana ni magunia 25 kwa ekari kunia 25 ya kilo 90 kwa ekari moja na ukiuza kwa bei ya 2500 ama 2800 unaona unapata pesa kama shilingi 1500 na kitu kwenda juu na gharama ya usalishaji ni 1040 ama 45 hasa faida ile unapata kwa eka moja ni kidogo sana chini ya shilingi 1000 na umeongojea kwa mwaka mmoja mzima unlike in Kenya the cost of maize production in neighboring countries is much lower. Mahindi kutoka Tanzania ama Uganda inafika Kenya na kwa bei ya shilingi 2000 ama 2200 na, na hapa Kenya sisi tunataka shilingi 3000 ama 1400 kwa, 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 kwa gunia ya kilo 90 ndio tuweze kukaramia ile gharama ya usalishaji. Due to constant frustrations with the maize crop, Jonathan is now trying his hand in tea and dairy farming. Tunaona serikali imeweka maanane sana kwa sekta ya majani chai na kahawa lakini sekta ya mahindi na ngano hatuoni serikali kama imeweka maanane sana upande hiyo kwa kusaidia wakulima kutafutia soko na kusaidia wa kwa subsidy ya fertilizer About 40 kilometers away in Kitale we meet Frederick Krono who closely identifies with Jonathan's experience He has been growing maize in Kitale for the past two decades. It is planting season here in Transoia County, Kenya's biggest maize producer, and the rains are almost due. Tunaenda sasa kuanza kupanda. He try planting. Kwa sababu tukingojea mvua hatutaweza kupanda na tinga 
lakini tunataka kupanda watu watumie mikono kupanda ni hapo to minimize the cost of labor Frederick has enlisted the help of his family in planting hii tunapanda leo tunarajia kuvuna mwezi wa nane mwezi wa nane alafu sasa mwezi wa nane tunarudia kulima na tunaweka marakwe kasi ini mbegu safi mafuno tutaipata mzuri eh during his long experience as a farmer frederick says he has seen it all including alleged corruption at the national cereals and produce board he remembers instances where depot managers colluded with unscrupulous individuals and obtained maize from farmers at a cheap price mkulima alizi alikuwa na mahindi yake akibereka NCBB yule mtu ambayo ni matapeli kubwa unaweza ingiza wachukue record yako eh, creating ya mahindi akichukua creating ya mahindi ya mkulima anasema umeanguka akishia sema umeanguka anakuja anakungojea nje ya mlango ya NCBB nasema oh pole pole mkulima alisema nini Naambia wamesema creating iko eh, imekuwa of color. Eh, moisture iko juu. Kumbe ilikuwa ni mbango yake na watu wa NCBB. Frederick claims the individuals would then pretend to empathize with the farmer. Anasema wao msee basa fanya hivi. Waja nikuhurumie nikuchukulie kwa bei ile ya huruma tu. Na sasa mnajua mkulima ana ana mambo mengine ana namna nyingine kurudisha mahindi kwa store ni karamba. Akasema Aishuru, angalia tu vile utanifanya. Anachukua mahindi yako kwa mlango ya NCBB hapo kwa mlango. After 20 minutes au 30 minutes amerudiza. Ameingiza kwa laini. Ukirudi hiyo mahindi itakuwa imepita yote. Moisture imepita. Hii breakages imepita. E, mambo ya rangi hiyo imepita hiyo ndio ujanja ambaye mkulima ya Kenya alipata ndio akafunjika roho kabisa au watu wakapata nafasi ya kuingiza sasa hiyo mahindi the often faceless profiteers are popularly known as cartels in Kenya the cabinet secretary for agriculture peter munya acknowledges the existence but declines to identify them wanajulikana wale walikuwa wananunua mahindi kutoka Mexico inaja kwa soko hapa wakulima wa mahindi wanakosa bei si wanajulikana good so mnapata kila kitu ama bado iko nini Kipkoril Menjo is the director of the Kenya Farmers Association and better understands the plight of farmers the major handicap which uh, the farmers have been currently facing is that the government seems not to be paying enough attention to agriculture despite the fact that it is always pronounced or you know said in all forums that agriculture is the backbone of our economy it is always said loudly but when it comes to funding to strengthen this backbone it just becomes another story in 2003 the Mwai Kibaki government signed the Maputo protocol and committed itself to be allocating 10% of the national budget to agriculture The Kibaki government failed to honor the commitment and so did the successive governments. When the Jubilee government came in, they, they, they have been doing around 2.9% despite the fact that we are talking of trillions in the budget. So the, why why this big mismatch? In the 2022-2023 national budget, agriculture was allocated 46 billion Kenya shillings out of 3.3 trillion shillings. This was only 1.39% of the total budget despite the fact that the agriculture sector contributes 25% of Kenya's GDP the allocation was 14 billion shillings less compared to the current year's allocation of 60 billion Kenya shillings what does it mean to the farmer that means the farmer will always be struggling to make ends meet because at a local level the farm implements are supposed to be zero rated there no tax But again when you get the spares they tax a tractor will not always remain new it has to be repaired 
the first year, the second year, it will start requiring some maintenance here and there. But if the spares are now taxed, mm -hmm. it makes again it, it makes it expensive, and that will add to cost of production going up. One of the consequences of the prolonged challenges in the maize sector has been land fragmentation, especially in the North Rift region. Land fragmentation has contributed in a big way in diminishing the arable land. Because you get, uh, through inheritance, you get the siblings who start subdividing the land, which was for their father or their mother. When they subdivide, the father go down when they have another generation, they continue doing that. Unajua mambo ya ukulima inategemea na ukubwa ya arti. Tunasema kwa luka ya kingeresa, economies of scale. Mashamba ikiwa ndogo ndogo, hiyo inakuwa ni subsistence. Utu atakuwa na lima, anapata mali ya kuishi, analima chakula tu ya kutuashelesha familia yake. Hata kuwa na chakula ya, ku, ya kuweza kuhusu ya kusaidia inji. Aside from land fragmentation, some maize farmers such as Frederick Rono are gradually abandoning maize and venturing into other crops such as coffee. Ile amua kubanda kahawa kwa sababu vile tumewonelea mambo ya maindi eh, kuna siyasa mingi ambaye na usu mambo ya serikali na wakulima. Kwa hivyo ukiwa na kahawa utausa bila hata serikali kujua. Eh, unausa tu pole pole. Kwa sababu kitanganya eh, uchumi na siyasa haitafanyika. Sayote unapika nduru. Tunapika nduru o serikali o ame aribu bei ya mbolea hakuna subsidy. Lakini kahawa unaseweka hata mbolea ya kondo. Na itafanya mzuri hata ya kuku. Hata manyua ya ngombe inafanya mzuri zaidi kuliko kuweka mbolea. Kwa hivyo hiyo ndiyo imetufanya to diversify mambo yetu ya ukulima. And that's not the only catch. Frederick says that coffee is currently fetching very good prices. Ngunia moja ya kahawa kilo tisini ni kama elifu tisini hivyo tu. Kwa sababu kilo moja ni elifu moja. Kwa Iyo ni gunia salasini ya maindi. Gunia moja ya kahawa. Na hakuna maneno ndani yake ati kuna eh, ablotoxin, kuna breakages, eh, mambo ya moisture, iyo hakuna. Ya. Yeah. Iyo ndio faida ya kahawa. We asked Peter Munya what he thought about the ongoing crop diversification by some maize farmers. No wengine wameacha ukulima wakisema mahindi haina faida wengine hata wameingilia kahawa saha kahawa ni nzuri na pia kumekuwa na cartels wengi sana na kiongeza na... diversification unapanda kahawa unapanda mahindi mbolea unapata hata mbolea ya kahawa iko nili sahau kusema society yenu ya kahawa imeingia mbolea iko iko itawauliza eh na kwa mdomo so kila kitu iko sawa but the situation on the ground isn't as good or as simple as munya makes it appear and it's not just farmers who have been affected. Traders such as Alice Nderito, who sell farm inputs in Kitale town, also said their businesses have been doing badly. I have been selling the diamonia, that is DAP for planting, uh, CN for top dressing, Ulea for top dressing. And at the moment now, I have 23.23, which is, uh, I have never sold and I'm trying to get to find out. So for those that are using manure, because what we are seeing as an alternative for the farmer as at now, they are going to actually turn into man to, 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 to manure, animal manure. And by the way, it's very expensive now. At present, Alice is getting fertilizer from Mombasa to Kitale at a cost of 5,800 Kenya shillings. But how much profit does she make? At most, at most a hundred, fifty bob, a hundred. If you're on the higher side, it's two hundred, which is impossible. It's not possible. Yeah. Previously, Alice would sell even two hundred bags of fertilizer in a single day. Nowadays, she sometimes sells just one bag in a day, as many farmers stay away. This has forced her to not stock the more commonly used fertilizer brands. I will buy that fertilizer at 6,000 or 5,800 and the most I can make is 100 shillings or 200 shillings. 
So I don't need to, to put money in, in a product that give me a hundred shillings. And also now there is a possibility, and not a possibility, because most of my good customers are not having enough money now. So they all want credit. And I wouldn't want to turn them off that I don't have, I can't give you. Because I also need, you have to pay cash, I paid cash. And uh, since I don't want to turn them off, I better not have it. I'm at peace for not having that 100 shillings and hurting my customers because he can see the fertilizer is here but I'm not giving him. Although Alice appreciates the recent fertilizer subsidy announced by the government, she is concerned it will affect her negatively. When you stock a lot and they are not buying, you risk having the Kaleova. And this Kaleova can tends to be to affect your finances. Because the, the, pro, the, the, the next year, if the prices come down, you are done. As part of the measures to reform the maize sector and without cartels, Agriculture CS Peter Munya has stated that the government will no longer be buying maize from farmers, nor set the prices. Sisi ya tunului maindi kutoka kwa wakulima, tunakikisha, tumetengeneza sector, vizuri, tumeintervene vizuri, bei naenda juu. Kwa sababu serikali yata ukiesabu maindi ile nikuwa inanua, nikidogo sana. Maindi ile nyingi unanua na, na watu binafsi. So kutanganya watu kwa sababu menua maindi kidogo umeweka kwa stoo, sasa umesaidia ni njinga. Maindi ile mingi uwe inanua na private sector. Paul Marus, the farmer we met early in the story, seems to have taken the cue from the government. Due to frustration, he stops trading with the government and now sells his maize directly to millers and private companies. Nimekuwa nikiuza maindi NCPB. Nimekuwa nikiuza maindi Unga. Nimekuwa nikiuza maindi hii kambuni ya Buffalo. Na nimekuwa nikiuza maindi hata kwa watu kutoka Nairobi. When we met, Paul had 8000 bags of maize which he planned to deliver to a private miller. Hii makunia kwa sababu ni 1800 na fikiri kama ni 1300 Mm -hmm. kama 24 million. But Paul is currently steeped in huge debt, which means whatever money he will get from his maze will go to service the loans. And that's not all. Paul is also facing charges of fraudulently acquiring 24 million Kenya shillings through irregular supply of maize to NCPB between 21st November 2017 and 24th January 2018. He denies the charges filed against him and 15 others. The case is ongoing at the Milimani Anti-Corruption Court in Nairobi. Until the case is determined, there is little hope he will get the millions of shillings he claims the government owes him. Meanwhile, he and other farmers are demanding for accountability from their leaders who they say have neglected them. The leaders, including Moibian MP Silas Tiren, who is also the chair of the Parliamentary Committee on Agriculture. The Fikiri Tiren has been able to do this because he has been able to do the government and the government has been able to do the government and the subsidy or to do the government. It has been a big deal that has been able to do the government because the government has been able to do the government. And they have been able to do the work the abyss campaigning, and I hope they'll remember that farmers also have votes. What I expect members of parliament is to come together and push for a specific agenda to be implemented. Because even right now, if the, if the government was meant to subsidize, there's no way the government can withdraw the money from the consolidated account without members of parliament passing it. You know, there is a way of doing it. You know, you lobby amongst your members. Maybe have around 30 standing at one given time, requesting for suspension of business of bells so that they address the issue of fertilizer. If they could do that, let me assure you, there will be reaction from the government. So if they, don't, if they don't do that, I mean, it is not going to be right for them to come and join us in trying to, to cry. I mean, to cry, oh, oh, telling the government to assist us, and they are the ones who are still part of the same government. Fili mimi nimeona 
uongozi ambaye tuko naye sasa hii sina moyo e, na charibu tu nilipe mateni sina moyo tutaendelea na ukulima kidogo kidogo mpaka siku ile tutapata serikali ile inaweza kukumbuka sekta ya ukulima na wakishatengeneza policies mzuri za ukulima tutaendelea kufanya ukulima kwa sababu hiyo ndio kazi yetu hatuna kazi nyingine with many large scale farmers like Paul and Jonathan reducing their maize production Kenya is likely to face a serious food shortage in the near future. So that means the government will end, will end up importing more food from outside. And importing from outside means we are not we are highly indebted with the foreign loans. Now that means we are going to get another loan to import food or rather use the foreign the mega foreign exchange we should have used for other things like medicine and materials building materials from outside. We used to import food Surely I think that will put us in a very awkward state. Nje yetu ni mzuri, mchanga ni mzuri, mvua ni mzuri. Hakuna ubungufu ya ati jua nini. Tungesaidiwa au tunga serikali ungatishika mkono tungelima na tungetosheleza mahitaji ya chakula ya nchi hii bila kutoa hata chakula nje.